the decision to use an iron chelator in MDS uh, is easier in a patient who has a lower risk uh, IPS score because those patients are going to live longer and if they are transfusion dependent, it's only a matter of time before iron overload sets in. So the risk benefit ratio in that patient favors iron chelation. Uh, preventing iron overload in that patient would have uh, important uh, benefits with regard to long-term complications and if that patient were to require a stem cell transplant later on uh, the complications would be less. Uh, so in that situation although the patient may experience some side effects from the chelator itself uh, the benefits would clearly outweigh the risks. In a higher risk patient we do not have enough data about the benefits of chelation but as more and more data accumulate, if there is a survival advantage and if there is a delay in leukemic transformation, again, the risks of uh, the treatment itself or the side effects would be, one can accept that if the uh, survival is improved or if leukemic transformation is delayed. So the important considerations would be the risk of the patient. Uh, other comorbidities are important. For example, if you have renal dysfunction using a uh, chelator like deferastrox would obviously be difficult uh, and these patients often do have a lot of comorbidity so that would be uh, these are important considerations in, you, in deciding to use the drug. In terms of when to initiate iron chelation therapy this is often dictated by the reimbursing authorities for example in British Columbia where I live and their criteria are based on the data from the congenital anemia so for example uh, uh, transfusion threshold of 20 red blood cell units or serum ferritin threshold of over a thousand. Um, so that, I think we still have a lot to learn about MDS and whether these thresholds are appropriate. But what I will say is that in a substantial m minority of patients, you may run into side effects that limit the dose that you can give these patients. And so whether it's GI side effects or whether it's an increase in creatinine levels, that can really limit the amount of iron that you can offload. I think that it makes sense moving forward and looking into the future uh, to look at trying to use iron collation therapy to prevent significant iron overload than trying to catch up with damaged tissue and organs. When we assess the need for uh, an iron chelation agent in a patient, in a patient with myelospastic syndromes, uh, we need to discuss several, uh, several points. The first point is, do the patient really need or not an iron chelation agent? And for that, we have the numbers of transfusions that the patient has received, potentially the ferritin level of the patient, as well as uh, the MRI when it's available. Uh, for liver and for heart. Based on that, we can decide on if the patient has really iron overload and the need uh, for some chelation, iron chelation. After that, we need to consider with the patient and what are the potential comorbidities of the patient. For example, if the patient has some liver or kidney uh, issues in the past, chronic kidney disease, uh, cirrhosis, it can be an issue, it can be a challenge uh, to give iron chelation agents such as uh, deferazerox uh, for uh, this patient. On the other hand, uh, we have uh, deferoxamine, uh, which is a sub-Q uh, or IV uh, formulation of iron chelation therapy. And we know for this patient that liver can be an issue too, as well as thrombocytopenia. And we know that myelosplastic syndromes uh, can have some cytopenia, so it may be a challenge. And just be based on the uh, patient profile, we can potentially uh, try to choose what is the better uh, iron chelation agent that we, uh, that we can use. The treatment of iron overload is something that is really important uh, for patients for which we think that survival may be prolonged because we know that we need to have uh, some time to have the accumulation of iron and to have potentially the consequences of the iron overload. So it's mostly in patients with low risk disease with transfusion dependent anemia that we have to discuss. Uh, the use of uh, iron chelation agent. And basically that's a question that we should ask for every patient uh, with uh, low risk myelosplastic uh, syndromes. Uh, the last patient I've seen for which we discuss uh, the uh, use or not of iron chelation 
agent, uh, agents were, um, was a 65 years old lady with potentially uh, years and years of life ex expectancy, but with a recent diagnosis for transfusion dependent multispastic syndromes. And for the moment, she doesn't qualify because she just have a couple of transfusion and we're beginning to have potentially some disease modifying agent. And one of the best treatments that we can give potentially uh, for uh, iron overload is treatment that can modify uh, the disease evolution by itself and stopping transfusion is one of the main goals that we should have. But when we need to add on the top of that iron chelation agent, um, in that case we need to wait uh, a little bit until we begin to have some consequences of iron or levels of accumulation of iron compatible with potential uh, tissue damage. Uh, for the patient. In that case, we have several agents that we can use uh, to potentially uh, treat iron overload with, uh, over the last year, a switch from the sub-Q or IV uh, deferoxamine uh, to the more recent oral agents like deferazirox, uh, for example.